بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا مرسي ويل نو وي دونت هاف تايم فور ايرور لا مرسي ذا بوكو فان ذا اوريجينال شيت ايرور الان سايد سو سلام يا ما تشوري من هذه المايا يا وان فان ذا مور فاير 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 مور
Sir, excuse me. I need to take that case. It does not fit under your seat. Sir, you need to take your seat. Can you please take Ma'am, you said I can bring this on FAA later. FAA right? regulations require that if it's under your seat or I need to this take on it. on three separate flights today. Please, can you please just give me a break? Three, three flights. It's a violin. Put your seatbelt on, please. Get your hands off. Wow. We're federal Ow. air marshal, hey, sir. Federal who? Calm down. Get we just have to have me, a look man. inside the kit. Get off. So it's a violin. We got you know you, how much sir. money that costs? Watch my hands. Ow, ow, ow. It's a violin. It's very I'm expensive. I'm going to need men step back to your seats. Call a Jewish lawyer. Call a Jewish lawyer. It's very expensive, that violin. Violin? This is my... Hey, I'm going to sue you all. I'm going to sue you. I'm going to sue you. I'm going to sue you. I'm going to Violin hero. Violin. Violin. Thank you. Say cheese. So let me get this straight, Agent Goldwater. All it took for you to conclude that an Arabic-looking man was an Al-Qaeda terrorist was the fact that he was carrying a violin case that had already cleared airport security and that he was watching a Tom Clancy movie. And we're not supposed to think that you had racially profiled this innocent performing artist the moment you set eyes on him. <clears throat> uh, Senator Kensington, my tactical assessment was based on a confluence of factors. But you want me to believe that if another airline passenger carrying a violin case and watching an American movie had been blonde and blue-eyed, you would have not profiled him as having smuggled a weapon or a bomb aboard this domestic flight between St. Louis and Las Vegas and pounced on him as if he had just walked out of a meeting with Osama bin Laden. Senator Kensington, on September 11th, 2000... I hardly think you're the person to be giving this illustrious subcommittee of the United States Senate a history lesson on the horrific events of 9-11, Agent Goldwater. How long have you been with the Federal Air Marshal Service, Agent Goldwater? Overall, two years, eight months of FAM field service, Senator. You're not actually a Federal Air Marshal, are you? I'm an augmentee from the Criminal Investigations Division of the IRS. I was called to the Federal Air Marshal Service as part of the 2002 surge program. I was recalled to FAM during an emergency stand-up situation. So in fact you're not trained to identify terrorists, but trained to investigate people who cheat on their taxes? Uh, Senator, that's not accurate. In addition to my law enforcement education, I received the same tactical training at FLETC. Not accurate, Agent Goldwater? Are you calling me a liar? Of course not, Senator Kensington, but if you showed the same concern for stopping the next 9-11 as you did for being politically Senator, correct... Senator, Senator, my client did not mean to... Counselor, impugn. I think the transcript of this hearing makes it perfectly clear precisely how little your client thinks of the laws designed to protect us from bigotry in a free and just society. Jack, great target, great body hits, and great head hits. Thanks. Collins. 
Got it. Shooters, fall off, take a five minute break. Jack, that was the chief's office. Seems that you've got your new, or shall I say your old assignment. Back to the IRS, huh? Well, it's been fun. Jack, all of us here at FAM, we're behind you 100%. I don't care what badge you have on, you're one of us. Thanks, Sally. That means a lot. Welcome back, Jack. Come on in, sit down. Thank you, sir. I want to get right to it. I can't put you back into field investigations. Not only would it bring unholy hell down on me, but as it happens, I don't have any openings in CID. Not now, anyway. I understand, sir. So it's a desk job. Wasted the taxpayer's money after all the training has gone into you. But you do have an option. Sir? You're Jewish. You lived in Israel for three years. You married a Sabra. You're, you're fluent in, in, in Hebrew, in Arabic, in Farsi. After two years in the Navy, you took a dual master's degrees in forensic science, forensic accounting. Oh, I have no doubt that with your commendations in field work, Mossad would grab you in a heartbeat. Hell, Homeland Security would take you on if your face hadn't been all over the front page of the New York Post. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's very thoughtful of you. But actually, that's part of what broke up my marriage. I'm an American. I'm not abandoning my country in a time of war, sir. I'll take your desk job. I... I assigned two previous agents to the job I'm giving you now. The first was a Sunday school teacher and a married man. His wife is divorcing him now. His church fired him. He quit his job here. But last I heard, he joined the Branch Davidians. Yikes. And the second agent? <laughs> the second agent. Next time we tried a female agent, she came to us from the ATF. She also quit the IRS after she was given this assignment. And frankly, I don't know where she is now. Sir, where are you sending me? To audit the Scientologists? That would be easy by comparison. I'm sending you to Pahrump. Delane, but you can call me Maggie. You know, like the cats. Welcome to our humble abode. Come in, sit down. Uh, hi, I'm We Jack don't Gold. use last names here, Jack. Maggie, I don't think Ladies, so. we have a gentleman caller. And he's a stud. <laughs> and Lady Magdalene. Maggie, I don't. Some booze? Just choose. 
news. I hope you will remain in time. You'll find I'm kind. You'll not have come in vain. Nothing to lose. So much for you to gain. No pain in here at Lady Magdalene's. Ladies, this is Jack. Please introduce yourselves. Uh, Maggie, I'm not We here. don't allow conversation with the ladies in the parlor, Jack. Ladies. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nurse Gretchen. I'd love to give you a sponge bath. Hey, I'm Sherzad. Let me tell you the thousand and second night. Hmm? Hi, I'm Pixie. Let me sprinkle my magic all over you. Hi, I'm Shanine, and I've broken all the rules. Hi, I'm Eden, and I would love to show you my garden. Yayan, Yayan Para, and Lady Magdalene. Hi, I'm Angel. Like to try a few falls with me? Uh, Lady Magdalene. Hi, I'm Jack. I'm from the government, and I'm here to help you. Oh, Hello. you're the new guy from the IRS, aren't you? Come on in, sit down. The replacement United States federal receiver. Yes, ma'am. The IRS has a mandate under federal law to maintain the profitability of any business operation in tax default. This brothel operates legally in the state of Nevada, the county of Nye, and therefore qualifies. Until such a time as Lady Magdalene's can pay its delinquent federal taxes and emerge from receivership, or until such a time as a federal court declares it incapable of recovering and auctions off its assets. Yeah, 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 I've been through it all, Agent Goldwater, I get it. Because I haven't paid my back taxes to the government, you're here acting as the brothel's owner, right? Well, yes, ma'am. Well, let me tell you something. I run a clean operation. My girls are the best in Nevada, and every client gets his money's worth. Lady Magdalene's. Get it? Yes, ma'am. Now, I intend to pay Uncle Sam every damn dime I owe him. I, I'm, I'm rebuilding here, and I just need time. I am curious about one thing, though. What's that? How does a business that sells sex on demand with gorgeous women managed to fall into such a financial hole that it slides into tax default in the first place. When my time has come Oh, Jack Lee's! It's 2-2! Two -two. Forgive it my great transgressions Forgive my Forgive my late night sessions Forgive my I lost a fortune relocating here from New Orleans after the hurricanes. First there was Katrina, and then my heart is always Rita, you know. In the end, I will think of you. Where's Sinead? 
I thought she was on service tonight. She's got the vapors. <laughs> okay. I'm covering a ship, Maggie. Thank you, baby. Well, I think this is as good a time as any for our new G-man to explain to us how he intends to run this place. Jack. Uh, first off, ladies, I'm not a, uh, <laughs> I'm not a G-man. That's, uh, that's FBI guys. <laughs> right. To begin with, then, I wanted to let you all know that I'll be staying here at Lady Magdalene's with you all for the duration of my Whoa, assignment. Wait, wait, wait a minute. There's going to be a man running this place? Staying in our house? Living in one of our bedrooms? I actually don't know how long I'm going to be here, so I can't rent a house in Crump. And my apartment is actually in Henderson, which is a 75-mile drive uh, each way. It's 150 miles a day. Ladies. You know, I really don't think we're being fair now. I think we should welcome such a charming gentleman who's going to be living here, just down the hall from us. Uh, no, mm, mm -hmm. that's, uh, no, 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 don't, whoa. Really, ladies, this is really not necessary, okay? I just, hey, whoa! The, Maggie! Mm -hmm. Ladies. What can I say? Like to get my cell phone, please. It's uh, locked in the nunnery. The nunnery? The storeroom. Maggie made a rule that we're only allowed to have a cell phones when we're not with a client. Well, I think we're uh, all adults here. We can probably do away with that rule. Thanks. The keys in her desk, top drawer. Here. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Hi. You know, I could make your time here very pleasant. Would you like me to be a girlfriend? Um. I don't think I can uh, afford a uh, girlfriend. Oh, you wouldn't have to pay me. Just be extra nice to me. Hmm? Um, that probably wouldn't be, uh, you know, very, very fair to, uh, to the other ladies, would it? I won't tell them if you don't. Um. What the hell is all this then? Agent Goldwater was just being kind enough to let me get my cell phone. Hmm? Oh, here it is. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Oh, that's what it was. Well, you didn't seem to be resisting too hard. Look, Maggie, you and I don't know each other very well yet, and 
I didn't plan all this out. You know, but now that I know what I'm up against, that is to say, having to, to deal with, uh, I won't let myself get ambushed again. We'll see. The last mail agent from the IRS, he gave me the same speech. Damn fool man. I have to take care of everything myself. I don't doubt it. Vale. Kurum omodas. Have to begin again, Buddy, they don't need to get a fighting favorite shows about tomorrow. Hey. Yeah, I'm gonna skip it tonight, even. I'm a little behind on my sleep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Coffee, ladies? Oh, looks like we have a new slave. <laughs> Bad taste to joke about slavery in front of black folks, baby. Especially if one of them is your boss lady. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll have a cup of coffee, Jack. Thank you. And you cheated with your sister's husband? While your sister was asleep Here, in baby, the next thank room? You. I do it better. Pixie? Oh, she's always chatting on that Let's website, Jack. Aren't you, baby? Bring him in! Nah, -uh. I'm studying for my civil torts final. Black. Hey, wasn't that guy on Ultimate Street Fighting Championships? I think he was. Help. I do not believe this. And if he drove, you get his keys and call him a cab. Guys, I need some spit. I'm dry. Thanks, girlfriend. What was all that about? Whenever one of the girls has an overserved client. Overserved? Passed out drunk. They feel a condom full of spit. It's convincing it's already climaxed. So that way we can get him out of here. I really wish I hadn't asked that question. Bedroom. Nobody comes into my room without permission. I knocked. Nobody answered. I didn't know this was your room. <clears throat> oh. oh! I'm the new guy. Remember? <sighs> Let me up, you son of a bitch! Temper, temper. That was a nice move just then. Very professional. Almost had me. Where did you learn that? Federal Law Enforcement Training Center, Glencoe, Georgia. Same place you trained. Nobody trains at Fletzy unless their agency sponsors them. Who sent you there? Treasury Department. Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives Bureau. Now will you let me up? Not until you promise not to jump me again. <clears throat> and if I don't? I could stay like this all day. <sighs> okay. Okay. Make it official. Say uncle. Uncle. I don't suppose you have the key hidden someplace inconvenient. <laughs> you wish. It's in the dresser drawer. Here? There. 
So what's a nice ATF girl like you doing in a place like this? I was the last one to have your job here. You were the federal receiver here before me? What happened? I filed a sexual harassment charge against my immediate supervisor. I had the highest performance evaluation of any agent in my field office. Didn't matter. Bastard had me transferred out of ATF over the IRS. Next thing you know, I'm marooned here in the middle of no place. So what on earth possessed you to quit and become a uh, prostitute? I figured if I was going to be treated like a hoe anyway, I might as well get well paid for it. I make more working here in a month than I did working as a federal agent in a year. I believe that. Nobody gets rich working for Uncle Sam. <laughs> Nobody honest, anyway. Say, are you free to uh, leave here for a few hours sometime? Maggie's ladies are under lockdown every day except for Tuesdays, doctor days. All the women here get tested for STDs every week. It's the only time we're allowed out of here. Lockdown? Like a jail? Why? This place is like boot camp. Uh, the locals like to pretend we're not here, lest we offend their delicate sensibilities. So we're only allowed into town on doctor day. Well, if you let me drive you into town on Tuesday, I have someplace special I think you'd like to see. I don't know if I should trust you. Hey, I work for the IRS. Who doesn't trust the IRS? I don't know what I'm doing, Meriwether. Cadillac Jack left me in such a financial hole. It's so deep, I don't know if I'll ever see top. I only got six girls working for me now. <laughs> Those big ranches over on Homestead. They get all the limo business from Vegas. I can't compete with that. Maggie. Lady Magdalene's is the little brothel that could. Just do what you did back in New Orleans and make this town sit up and take notice of us. <laughs> you do that to me every time, don't you, baby? Uh -huh. Welcome to Lady Magdalene's Sunday Gospel Sing-Along. We're happy to be part of your fine community this glorious day. Can I get a witness? Hey! 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 Join me, ladies. Our song begins today and is taken from the book of Joshua. It's about the most famous hooker of all time. The good book says she was an ancestor of our Lord. Can I get a witness on that now? Praise the Lord! This is the story of an ancient starling. Her name was Rahab and she was a harlot. She lived in Jericho, her dick's on the wall. Just ask any husband, but she had them all. Rahab, the biblical She believed in our God. Well, she worked a business in the district that was scarlet. She was the city most notorious harlot. Joshua knew the city was due for a fall. So he spoke to his army, said, let's get them all. Lord and Lord and Lord. Holy, 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 baby, 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 holy, baby, 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 holy, 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 she believed in our God. They tell a story from Memphis to Charlotte. Famous tale of this biblical harlot. She hid the spies that old Joshua sent. And when the walls came tumbling down, she said, Lord, I repent. A Joshua in the battle of Jericho. A Jericho. A Jericho. Joshua Act. 
gave our faith to our God. Can I have me back by curfew? I don't know, we'll just have to see. It's a big desert. But you have a problem with heights? Indiana Jones has snakes. I have heights. <laughs> What's an action hero without a flaw to keep him human? Ah, uh, shucks. I'll wave to you from the top. Take my gun and drag me off to jail No cops were there to help me live But now I'm out on bail I'd rather be tried by twelve than carried by six I'd rather live than die I'd rather be tried by twelve than carried by six Let some other mama cry I'd rather be tried by twelve than carried by six I'd rather live than die I'd rather be tried by twelve than carried by six Let some other mama cry Up an appetite. For what? Dinner. What else? Dinner. Yeah. Okay. But just dinner, right? Right. Were you this guarded when you were at the ATF? Always. I'm in condition yellow readiness even when I sleep. I'll keep that in mind. Sure it is, but I've got someplace better in mind. <laughs> better than this? In Perum? Trust me. Hi. Hi. Two for the buffet, please. Okay. This is your idea of a romantic dinner? Whoa, whoa, who said anything about romantic? You said just dinner. Oh, I suppose you expect me to pay for myself, too. Don't be ridiculous. How could you even think I would be so crass? I have a uh, two-for-one coupon. Okay, that'll be seven forty-nine, dollars please. There you go. Keep the change. Thank you. This way, please. All right. Go ahead. No, go. You first. Thank you for a lovely day. But we'd better go in separately. 
Gossip won't help either of us. What? No, uh, goodnight kiss? You expect a lot from a two-for-one coupon, mister. I was just kidding. I'd hate to, uh, compromise your professional status. <laughs> You're a thoughtful guy. I am a thoughtful guy. You won't find that on the menu inside. Good night, Jack. Good night. Good evening, Pahrump. I'm Tom Slaughter for News 41. Tonight's top story is the continuing drama following the kidnapping Sunday of a prominent Nevada surgeon's wife. Kitty Weber, wife of neurosurgeon Samuel Weber of the world-renowned Death Valley Health Center, was forced into a van by two masked men as she walked to her car. Now that's another woman that needs a Lady Smith pistol in her purse at all times. Hey, that's Dr. Weber. I used to work with him. Come with me. Anyone with information is urged to call the Nye County Sheriff's Department. Their number what is What did you do for him, sweetheart? No, well, it wasn't like that. I'm he Harris. is a neurosurgeon, and I was a surgical nurse working in the OR with him. He is a genius, developed a new kind of brain cell transplant for patients suffering paralysis following strokes or traumatic brain injury. So how'd you wind up here? I got caught taking painkillers from the drug locker without a prescription. Stupid of me. Any of the doctors there would have written me the script. Anyway, zero tolerance policy and I was fired. There's a zero tolerance policy here too, sweetie. Anyway, after that, I was blackballed and I needed a new career and I found it here. <laughs> <laughs> Maggie. Yes, Meriwether, thank you. I'll take care of it. So how is that? Oh. Your 11 o'clock is here? Yassin? He has a violin. Thanks, Maggie. That's, uh... Well, I'm sure you guys can find something to do without me, huh? Oh. Thanks, well, guys. it's no fun playing without her. Why don't we go back to your room, sweet cheeks, and you can take my temperature. <laughs> Maggie. Is there any way I can get a look at Shahrazad's client without them knowing? I wouldn't ask if it weren't important. Come with me. And you brought your violin? Yes, I did. And are you going to be playing for me tonight? Of course, of course. That's what I promised you know, a little private recital. Just me and you. Then let's go back to my room. Oh, but, uh, um, Meriwether's going to have to check your violin case. House rules. What is it about violin cases that makes everyone so nervous? It's like I have a suitcase nuke in here or something. Maggie, is there any way we can listen in on what they're saying? Yeah, in my office. But that's only for an emergency, in case one of the girls pushes the panic button. You know. This might be an emergency, a national emergency. Let's go. Are you sure you don't need a warrant for this, Jack? Maggie, I am not interested in prosecuting this guy. I am interested in stopping a possible terrorist attack. We can hear them, but they can't hear us, okay? Mercy. 
طبق نقشه ما جنس رو نگه میداریم بقیرم برای پنج شمعه حاضر میکنیم شما در حوردم خالی میکنیم What, what are you doing? You speak yeah, Arabic? Yes, Fishan. But they're actually speaking yeah. Farsi, which I also speak. Hold on, let me get this down. Let me get this down. Greek to me. Jack Goldwater. Jack Goldwater. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Are you going to get this down? Why didn't you warn me before I came here tonight? I tried when we were talking on the phone, and then you hung up and you never called back. It's my fault. It's my fault. It's my fault. Okay, just calm down. Okay, relax. You're right. That's right. Okay. I'll play something on the violin. Calm you down. Good idea. Interesting. This is the first of huh? like my clients ever brought in a violin and played a concert. Did I ever tell you I want to be a classical singer once? No, you didn't. <laughs> From Bach to Basin Street. <laughs> How long are they going to do this? Long song. A concert. I seem to have broken my G-string. Your G-string? Yeah. I don't have another one. Why don't you warm up the bed and I'll find something for us to listen to. I'll download something.
Shah From Kandahar to Ramallah we call it star Peace to Hamas and the Hezbollah OBL booby like a shining star Like the way we destroyed them two tower Ha <laughs> ha But uh, we should speak English, yes. I will need to use it soon enough, but you sooner than me. Please, sit. Thank you. <sighs> so, uh, it's true, Director. You, you are sending back to America? Yes, to Las Vegas, in the province, excuse me, state of Nevada. There is very limited time. I am informed that two years from now would be too late. Oh, uh, no thank you, Director. I have to stay in shape for my mission unless... We need no masters for this operation to succeed. You have uh, more self-control than I am. Not that I have uh, many opportunities to indulge myself these days. You study violin at uh, Culver City High School. Attended ACLU. Uh, you see. Right, yes, sir. Uh, majored in acting with a minor in music. Failed to find sustained work in films or television. Jewish producers? You know, they never tell you why you don't get the part. I was cast as a Mexican, an illegal alien, a gangbanger once. Um, once I even played an Israeli violinist, because I was the only person in my age range who can play the violin. Did you uh, meet any movie stars? Oh, movie stars. <sighs> Tons. Yeah, movie stars? <laughs> yeah, I uh, did a scene with Will Ferrell once. Gave me his autograph. And Sean Penn. Sean Penn. I met Sean Penn at Starbucks. Yes. I like him. I like him very much. Did you ever meet uh, Barbara Streisand? I, I loved her in the way we were. Um, director, she's a Jew? <laughs> oh, <laughs> some of my best enemies are Jewish. Getting in shape? Sir, I just took off 50 pounds. Wonderful. Are you excited for your mission? And it's going to be wonderful, sir. Good, good. You can both relax. The director has informed me that no martyrs will be needed for this operation to succeed. So you both get your chance to make the pilgrimage to the Kaaba. All right. Yeah. Well, you don't have to look all that happy about it. I mean, weren't you guys eagerly anticipating your chance to martyr yourself in the holy struggle? Defeat the infidels. Oh, yes, we're so disappointed. Devastated, in fact. Nothing better than marching itself for Islam. I can't wait to meet those 72 virgins. All right, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I mean, who wants to die if they don't have to, right? Not me. Okay. I've got a lot to live for. Girlfriend's pregnant. Don't know how I'm going to tell her parents, actually. 
I have tickets to see Revival of Cats. I don't want to miss that. But on the other hand, I'm just taking you to easy, guys. I'm just kidding. I got you guys good this time. Okay, listen up. Yes, sir. Here's what you're gonna have to do. A crate will be arriving in Veracruz, Mexico next week, carrying an item of great importance to us. The two of you are gonna take my SUV with diplomatic plates crossing near Nuevo Laredo to Laredo, Texas, where you await further orders. Now, under no circumstances are you to open this crate. Doing so will jeopardize this mission and bring great danger to both of you. Do you understand? Yes, yes sir. sir. Is there any possibility that this could be a trap that the American authorities already know what's inside that crate before we get there? No, 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 no. We've had a sleeper embedded in Dubai for years now. You'll get your manifest from our agents. Okay? Yes, sir. You're the best. I won't fail you, sir. Okay. Allah Akbar. God be with you. Yes, Agent. There's no evidence of any firearms involved in Prince and the knife found at the scene belonged to the victim. I appreciate the report, Agent. Upon examination of the body, we found some hemorrhaging under the eyelid. And as you well know, that's indicative of strangulation. Oh, so, God! I'm sorry, I'm sorry Maggie. Strangulation! Yeah, yeah. What we'll do, Agent, we'll keep the FBI in, in the loop on this one. And thank you so much for your report. Thank you. I'm sorry. She was so young. <laughs> Come on, there's nothing we can do. Come on. Why don't you was so young? Why? Oh, Jack. Jack, why? Come on. Why? Come on. Damn it! Come on. Yes. Yes, I am absolutely certain it is the same man I stopped on flight 419. He's now the primary suspect in the murder of this prostitute. Yes, sir. You can look at my verbatim notes either in Farsi or the English translation. The van is to be unloaded at Hoover Dam tomorrow. Yassin stressed to his agent that two years from now would be too late to complete their mission. Sir, two years from now, the Bureau of Reclamation is closing off all vehicular traffic to Hoover Dam. They are diverting traffic to a new freeway two miles away where even a nuclear blast couldn't damage the dam. Yes, sir. Briefing at the FBI field office, 1400 hours. I'll be there. Sit down, Agent Goldwater. I'm the FBI special agent in charge of this office, Curtis Broderick. I believe you already know Homeland Security Agent Cynthia Seagate. Well, not by that name, but yes. Obviously, there's a little more going on here than I know about. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. To put it not so mildly, you just wiped out my investigation. Considering nobody told me there was an investigation? No need to get defensive, Agent Goldwater. Nobody's blaming this particular screw-up on you. This screw-up? Thanks. So you were at Lady Magdalene's to keep an eye on Scheherazade. NSA intercepted chatter that there was a female Al-Qaeda operative working as a prostitute at Lady Magdalene's. I was assigned there as the federal receiver to identify this operative. 
but from a position of authority, I was unable to establish a personal relationship with any of the women. So I went undercover as a prostitute myself to get closer to them. And you identified Scheherazade as the Al-Qaeda agent? Actually, I thought Scheherazade was too obvious. Until this morning, I thought the Al-Qaeda was Pixie. You've got to be kidding. What? You become a prostitute to identify an Al-Qaeda operative, and I beat you to her? You must want to kill me. Posed as a prostitute, Jack. HS agents made it look like I was working. Not even Maggie knew. Well, that's a relief. But you still think I wiped out your investigation. The Al-Qaeda is dead, Agent Goldwater. Any chance we had of tracing her to the rest of her cell died with her. She's dead because I tagged her superior as a terrorist the moment he entered this country. And nobody bothered to surveil him because you all assumed that I screwed up. Now, I've told you who he is, where he's going to be, and what the likely target is for Al-Qaeda's attempt to make 9-11 look like a street mugging. Despite their claims, we have no intelligence that leads us to believe that Al-Qaeda have a nuclear device. Yeah, well maybe you do, and nobody's paying any attention. Didn't you have agents that warned you that 9-11 was going to happen? Nonetheless, out of an abundance of caution, Homeland Security has increased the threat level at Hoover Dam to Orange. Now since it's a federal facility, an FBI HS task force will be locating your suspected Al-Qaeda and the van that he talked about. Let me get this straight. You're not shutting down traffic to the dam. If we did that, he aborts and we miss catching him. Now from your report, we conclude he doesn't know that you made it. So, he's likely to proceed as planned. We're counting on you to identify him for us when he passes through that checkpoint. It's quite a risk you're taking with a national treasure. What if you're wrong? And Al-Qaeda has smuggled in a device to nuke Hoover Dam tomorrow. And Uncle Sam won't be paying any of us our pensions. So, what would you have done? What? What would I have done when? At Lady Magdalene's. If you'd been picked out of the lineup. Not by one of your fellow agents. I mean, there was always a risk. Not really. More than you think. I almost picked you. I was just showing up for work. <laughs> well, that's very sweet, Jack. But that's not what I meant. Whenever a civilian picked me from the lineup, I always priced myself way too high during the negotiation. And he'd return to the parlor and choose another girl. Hmm. Clever. What if the guy had been a billionaire? A billionaire? I guess I would have slept with him. Really? Just in the line of duty. You understand. That's him. Tan, SUV. 
Agent Broderick, it is a tan SUV. California license plate DPL16. Driver is male, dark hair, olive complexion, medium build, extremely attractive, wearing a blue shirt. Let's go. So, what do we got here? Scuba gear. Yasin must have transferred whatever else was in this crate to another vehicle before he approached the checkpoint. Could he be strapped with enough explosives to damage the spillway system? Impossible. No way could an individual be strapped with a nuclear device. And no conventional explosives in the quantities he could carry could cause significant structural damage. If there's any remaining threat to the dam, it's not from him, but from whatever else was in this crate. Unless he came here to toss a weaponized contaminant into the reservoir. Oh, Jesus. Wait a minute. Scuba gear. Huh? Scuba gear. The wire! I want you to call the Navy! Top priority! I want some seals down here in Lake Mead. In the water, ASAP on the double and tell them it's code green lightning you got that green lightning base well mcguire what are you waiting for let's move it i'm on it base boss says call the navy seals under lake meat green lightning Yeah, we 
we got no one here from the Bureau of Reclamation. Any of you guys familiar with the layout of these tunnels? A little. I trained with a guy at Fletzy who used to work here. He talked endlessly about the dam. One of these tunnels ends right over Lake Mead. Right. You take Seagate, get in the tunnel after the subject. Okay, McGuire, get them fast. Morgan? Harris? I want you to stand over watching the tunnel mouth in case the subject doubles back. Everyone else back to the checkpoint. I'm changing their unconditional left. They're shutting down the traffic to the dam. through our guys is a 60-story plunge into Lake Mead. What if he pulls a Dr. Richard Kimball on us? He might if he plans to contaminate the reservoir. I'm not Marshal Sam Gerard trying to catch the fugitive. If your scene gets anywhere near Lake Mead, I'm stopping him. I'd rather capture him alive than the intelligence boys. Maybe we'll get lucky. But your scene's already killed once that we know of. Let's not give him another chance. Yassine, make one move and I'll drop you. So we meet again, Mr. Bond. Choose your next witticism carefully, Yassine. May be your last. Oh, uh, you prefer Goldfinger's dialogue? I should have guessed by your last name. Oh, and watch this. Hoshigula, how appropriate. Yasin, I want you to lay down on the ground, flat, very slowly. Sorry, Agent Goldfinger. You're not writing this script. to the checkpoint.
sir, that was amazing. But we better hurry. Commander Gamal Husni is waiting for us at the safe house. You were pretty good shooting up the tunnel just now. I thought you were afraid of heights. I am. But what good's an action hero? If he can't overcome his paralyzing fear and impress the action heroine he's fallen in love with. So let me get this straight, Agent Goldwater. You ran outside the security building at the Hoover Dam checkpoint where you were able to observe the passing vehicles without being seen. And the moment you show your face outside, this supposed Al-Qaeda terrorist of yours makes a run for it. Senator, no testimony has been offered by any witness to these events that my client's presence on the scene was the cause of the Al-Qaeda operative's flight. Can't your client speak for himself, Counselor? Or is he afraid that his words will once again convict him out of his own mouth? Senator, Without my identification of Yassine Salim as an Al-Qaeda terrorist, Homeland Security would have had no way to disrupt whatever their plans were. Agent Goldwater, the record doesn't even prove that this man is an Al-Qaeda operative. All we have is your word on that, and you have an axe to grind since your first confrontation with this individual led to public embarrassment and a loss of your assignment to the Federal Air Marshal Service nor has sufficient evidence been developed by the Nye County Sheriff's Department for them to issue an arrest warrant on the charge that your suspect murdered the prostitute. Now, if you would not allow this man to elude detention twice in one day, may I add, then you conceivably might have been able to present some believable explanation today for why the Department of Homeland Security, the FBI, the ATF, and four other federal agencies declared a condition red and shut down all the traffic over the Hoover Dam, where they subsequently found no evidence whatsoever that anything more dangerous than scuba diving apparatus was being transported by this terrorist of yours. Senator, may I have a moment to consult with my client? Jack, she's just waiting for you to lose your temper again. It doesn't matter. I'm finished no matter what I say. Senator Kensington, you have your opinion, and I have mine. You don't think I did my job very well. And I am constrained by the power of this committee to find me in contempt from telling you what I think of your job performance. Oh, please, go ahead, Agent Coldwater. I promise you that this committee will not find you in contempt for offering an honest opinion. Jack. Jack. Senator Kensington. I used the training I received at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center to profile a terrorist on his way into this country. I tried to stop him, but because of a doctrine of political correctness trumping national security, which you champion, he was given a free pass and I was reprimanded. My opinion, Senator Kensington, is that if you had simply been more responsible, we would have one less dead girl in the world today. Top story this evening, Channel 41 has just received more breaking news concerning I'll take the one of those, would you? Of a prominent Nevada surgeon's wife. Kitty Weber, wife of neurosurgeon Samuel Weber of the world-renowned Death Valley Health Center, was forced to... Hey, you ready? All packed. Do you want to grab something to eat or drive right back to Vegas? I do have two-for-one buffet coupons. <laughs> I'm going to miss you guys. <laughs> You're good people. I'm gonna miss you too, Maggie. Uh, Maggie, are you gonna be all right? I know you're down two girls now that I'm leaving you. I'm gonna miss you. But Meriwether got on the phone 
And I got some gals coming down from up north. They'll be here next week, so I'll be fine. That reminds me, with my proceeds up since the concert, how does Lady Magdalene stand now? Well, I think since all this uh, cloak and dagger business is over, we can talk to the judge about ending your receivership and setting up a payment plan for your remaining back taxes. Well, now that's what I'm talking about. Costello Labs last week to steal a case of ID 230. The experimental pharmaceutical is undergoing clinical trials at the Death Valley Health Center. Selwyn Harris has more. That's very peculiar. What is, baby? That someone would steal ID 230. As far as I know, its only use is as the immunosuppressant used to prevent rejection of transplanted brain cells and the experimental neurosurgery that Dr. Weber developed. And as far as I know, Dr. Weber is the only surgeon on this planet who's doing that procedure. What did you say? That ID-230... <gasps> wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this the same Dr. Samuel Weber whose wife, Kitty, got kidnapped by two guys last week? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? What are you thinking? The only thing left in the crate you seen with driving was scuba gear. Yassine wasn't transporting a WMD in that crate. He was transporting a person. Someone so wanted, so recognizable, that he couldn't risk showing his face in a normal mode of transportation. Someone suffering paralysis from a stroke or traumatic brain injury? Who might have received that injury when a bunker buster hit his cave in Afghanistan. And who would only choose a Jewish doctor if he were literally the last man on earth who could treat him and would kidnap the Jewish doctor's wife to make sure that he'd perform the procedure. A son of a bitch. Pixie, is your computer online? Sure, I'm just doing traffic school. You know I got a ticket last Tuesday for doing 45 past the prompt nugget, and this is supposed to be the Wild West? Gretchen, assuming we're right, could Dr. Weber have performed this procedure at any facility other than the Death Valley Health Center? I don't see how. For one thing, it requires the use of huge cryogenic units used to cool the patient's spinal fluid to 26.4 degrees Celsius. Gretchen, you're very knowledgeable, but what we need right now is a tactical picture. Are you saying that the only place Dr. Weber could have performed the procedure is the OR at Death Valley Health Center? Correct. How long following the procedure until Dr. Weber would consider it medically safe for the patient to travel? That's hard to say. The operation has only been performed eight times that I know of. But Dr. Weber prefers to monitor a patient's progress following the procedure for at least three weeks. But a patient could conceivably check himself out AMA in... American Medical Association? Against medical advice. Oh. In as little as ten days. Which, if our calculations are right about when the procedure was performed, is today. Well, considering that I don't even know if I still have a job, I think you better make the call to Broderick on this one. Jack, this is only a theory. And Curtis Broderick is not going to stick his neck out to mount another operation without some compelling hard evidence. Well, let's get it for him. Gretchen, can you draw us a map of the Death Valley Health Center? I'll do better than that. If Al-Qaeda is holding Sam and Kitty as hostages, I'm going with you. The hell you are. Gretchen, listen to yourself. This is Al-Qaeda we're talking about. Jack and I have counterterrorism training. You don't. My best friend's dad was on Flight 93. The passengers on that flight didn't have any counterterrorism training either, but they're the only ones who managed to stop an Al-Qaeda attack on 9-11. Yes, but it cost them their lives. Give me liberty or give me death. Live free or die. Don't shut on me. Me too. We're wasting time. You're going to need a little distraction. And we are very good at creating distractions, aren't we, girls? <laughs> Pixie, I'm going to need you to break into the DVHC Neuroscience HR database and reinstate me. Here, baby. Girlfriend, not only am I going to get you your old job back, I'll raise your salary. Can you put Cynthia and me into the database as doctors? No problem. Gretch, just tell me what's supposed to be on the personnel forms. The badges are going to have to say MD, comma, F-A-C-S. That makes them board certified as surgeons. Make me Dr. Muhammad Fudd. Pull around back. There's a loading dock leading to a service elevator. Senator Kensington's gonna have a field day with this. What if someone recognizes Gretchen or stops us? 
I've worked identity theft investigations. If it can be checked in the computer, nobody's going to bother us. But if Yassim's in there, we have to make sure he doesn't see our faces. Uh, Gretchen, uh, baby, what do you want us to do in the meantime? Okay, take the elevator up to the first floor nurse's station and make yourself at home in the visitor's waiting room. Tell the nurse on duty that you're waiting for a patient who's being moved up from the ER that usually takes all day. I'll ring Maggie's cell phone if we need you. I didn't forget it. Jack, you come with me up to the neuroscience ICU unit. First thing, I'll check patient records at the nurse's station. Right. Cynthia, they're probably holding Dr. Weber somewhere close by where they can get him to his patient in a hurry. With any luck, his wife will be there too. I'm on it. Oh, this is so exciting. It's like we're on Mission Impossible or Charlie's Angels or something. Yeah, but without the stunt doubles. Watch your pretty little behinds, okay ladies? Let's cross our fingers, that's our guy. Where are we going? Follow me. Take a good look, Dodge. If Satan has her way, we might not see its like again. The cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, all which it inherit shall dissolve. Prospero's final speech in the Tempest, right? I never imagined Jesus quoting Shakespeare. Uh -uh. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, assalamu alaikum, Doctor. Doctor Fade. Fad. F Fed. I'm sorry, Doctor. I don't speak Arabic. You don't speak Arabic, and yet you were trusted with an assignment of this importance. Oh, I don't need to speak Arabic. He speaks English very well. I'll tell him you said that. He will be pleased. Thank you. I was sent for to make sure he's ready to travel. Um, this is embarrassing, Dr. Fed, 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 Fed. Um, I wasn't told anybody was coming today. I know. I didn't expect to get a flight until tomorrow. Um, doctor, I'm under strict orders that I need to clear anybody who goes in. If you'll give me a moment to make a phone call, I'll make sure everything's all you right. You do that. Yes, sir. In the meantime, yes. I will return to my hotel. You may tell him that I came to see him today, but instead, I will examine him tomorrow. A shame we will have to delay his departure. Oh. Uh, doctor, t Dr. Fade, Dr. 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 Fed, please, please, please come back. I'm sure it will be all right, Doctor. Please, go right in. Assalamu alaikum, ya qa'id. Wa alaikum as salam. Anta bittahki, ya rabbi. Naam, ya qa'id. Ana, Dr. Fad. Yassin Nazim Ma'ad, ashan nakshif alayk. Kif halak al-yum? Assan. على ما حسيتش كده من سنين شوف أه. انا هادي رامي الكيد لوحدي حتى شوف دي اول مره ده وقف على رجليا من سنتين Al Jara el Yahudi da Abkari. Bi Khalini Bahis, bi la Safi Nehna, Ferb Mashkalu. You may go. This man is my physician. Yes, Director. Thank you. You see, the muscles in my legs still have some strength. Another two years, I'm told, and even if the neurological damage had been repaired, my legs would have atrophied beyond recovery. Doctor, I, I heard by your accent that you're not a native speaker. 
neither am I. I was brought up under foreign occupation and I learned Arabic as a second language. Where did you study Arabic? Believe it or not, director, at the Hebrew University. I also studied Farsi and Hebrew, but English is my first language. You are uh, an American? Yes, director. You know, Dr. Fudd, many Americans misunderstand my intentions towards them. The September 11 attacks were a harsh lesson, necessary to focus the attention of the American people on their government's Zionist Crusader Alliance. Other lessons, even harsher, may yet be necessary. But it has never been my desire to destroy your great country. I hope someday that America will be the crown jewel in the worldwide caliphate and that one of our brethren will sit in the Oval Office. That is quite a dream, Director. Yes, of course. That will never happen until we cleanse this country of the Zionist Crusader government. Hitler thought he could solve the Jewish problem, but his movement had no foundation. It was a, a creation of the modern age, historically paper thin. And the Jewish problem goes back thousands of years. The Prophet has said, the end won't come before the Muslims and the Jews fight each other till the Jew hides between a tree and a stone. Then the tree and stone say, oh, you, Muslim, this is a Jew hiding behind me. Come and kill him. What? You're such an idiot! Could she tell me I'm a guard? Yeah. I'm a guard for his enemy. He's not a doctor. He's a man from Musaad Jihan. He's a man. He's a man who knows me. But he's not. أدري أكيد أنا بشتغل مع أمين أي الشك إلي ملوش أي أساس ديا قائد قول له تخالي الممرضة تمشي ياسين مش هذا الطبيب إلي قلتلي إنه جاي من شان يأكد إن الجرى اليهودي مش حيخونا ياسين مش عارف أنا شكلي أي هو بقالي إيميل بس إذا خير إنه مرغباتني مع واحد تاني وفي الشك أتى الواحد كمان من أصحابنا الأمريكان الشقاقان. ياسين، put the gun down and let the nurse go. He was the U.S. Air Marshal who, who operated the brothel, and he was at the Hoover Dam, and he chased me into the tunnels. <laughs> Director, this man doesn't make sense. To be in all these different places, playing all these different parts, I would have to be James Bond. Yasin, I'm afraid you're letting your actor's imagination run away with you. Put the gun down now, and we'll figure out a way to get you out of the country with me before the Americans arrest you for killing our friend Ali. Director, you have to listen to me. Put the gun down now, Yasin! Sameh me. That's for killing my girl, you murdering bastard! Nurse, call in a code blue. We can still save these two men. Yes, Dr. Weber. And Gretchen, it's great to have you back. Thank you, Doctor. I guess Cadillac Jack was right. The way things are going on in the world today, girls got to be ready for anything. Director. 
Welcome to America. We hope your stay here will be long and fruitful. Maggie, thanks for saving my butt again today. Oh, it was a pleasure saving that cute little butt of yours. And you come back here anytime you want. You're welcome, okay? Thanks, And Maggie. you too, Angel. I mean, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. Now listen, anytime you want to try the life for real, you just call <laughs> me, okay? Maggie, you never know. Mm. Hey, Jack, next time you're back here, you get a freebie coming from me. Anything you want. Thanks, Eden. From any of us, Jack. We'll have to see about that. Ever how to force them? Back off, ladies. I saw him first. Amateur. 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 <laughs> Maggie. Oh, yeah. Yes. Right away. Thanks. I've arranged through a good friend of mine for a limousine to take you guys back. Well, Maggie, that's awfully nice of you, but I uh, checked out a motor pool car to come here. I'm gonna have to return it. Not to worry, boy. It'll get back where it belongs, and you can trust me on that. Okay. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Don't worry about your luggage. It'll all be taken care of. Thing. Maggie, I knew you were one of a kind, but how did you pull this off? <laughs> oh, sometimes a little Cajun magic goes a long way, son. <laughs> Maggie, let's stay in touch, okay? We'll do that, Angel. <laughs> They're agents, Seagate and Goldwater. Ma'am. your IDs. And your guns. All of them. Right this way. Well, I want to thank you. You're much that good people. Oh, I know you'll take good care of them. You know I'm real proud of you. I like the things you've done. We'll talk soon. You're some lady, lady. What could I say? Yes, sir. Happy old trick. Hold your position. Merryweather, Merryweather. <laughs> It's another fine mess you've got to be <laughs> All right, Henry, let's go. Mr. President, please allow me to say that it is both a great honor and a big surprise to meet you. The honor is all mine, Agent Goldwater. I have been looking forward to meeting you since you gave that shellacking to Senator Kensington. Thank you, sir. You too, Agent Seagate. I've been hearing a lot of great things about the both of you. It's quite a feat you pulled off today. Tell me, what would you think about working in the West Wing? You don't have to answer the question right now. It reminds me of that day at Camp David when... Please, sit. Please sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sir, yeah. you need to take your seat. Can you please sit down? It's very I'm going to need you man. to step it's back to your seat. Fasten your seat belts. George W. Bush 
Infidel. PM Tony Blair. Infidel. Frenchie Jacques Chirac. Infidel. Allah sending them to hell. Surgeon and I was a surgical nurse working in the OR with them. So how'd you wind up here? Or do you just like to f Hey, let's keep it clean. You know better than that. Ornicate? Hey, Jack. Yeah? How many hookers does it take to screw a light bulb? No clue. <laughs> as many as the light bulb can afford. <laughs> A woman's gotta be ready for anything Or she won't be ready at all A woman's gotta be ready for anything Long, short, medium, or tall Well, Maggie was a game gal who hailed from Nolan Who grabbed the brass ring or lose it all then now pick up the pieces or take the fall But when she found a sweet man, his love was too small A woman's gotta be ready for anything Or she won't be ready at all Maggie was not the kind of wife to just shop at the mall Pray at church on her knees to sing Peter or Paul uh, folks said, mm, now ain't she got some gall But uh, Maggie didn't care, she was having a ball And as for a man, it wasn't his call A woman's gotta be ready for anything Or she won't be ready at all Now a man's a funny thing when all goes well He'll give you sweet loving, then you can go to hell. Well, Maggie loved that man, and he done her wrong. Spent all her money on some sweet siren song. A woman's gotta be ready for anything, or she won't be ready at all. Now, lady was right the day she said. God bless a child who can make her own bed Well now, out on her own Maggie wouldn't sell her soul But she knew plenty of gals whose souls were on hold So after Rita and Katrina without a grump or a bump She picked up her operation and moved to power up Oh, woman's gotta be ready for anything Or she won't be ready at all Now when Maggie gets the short shrift she won't creep or crawl She don't give a good damn if her back's against the wall Or if a boat runs into the perfect storm squall Or if Uncle Sam's IRS has come to call Or whose damn ashes she has to haul Maggie's here to tell you a one and all A woman's gotta be ready for anything Or she won't be ready at all Well, Maggie's ready for anything Yeah, she's ready Come one or come on What can I say?
interested. I've never actually heard of Sorry and Brandy before. Hi, I'm Jack. I'm from the government. And I'm here to help you. Say what? That's awfully nice of you, Maggie, but um, I checked out a motor car, motor f It's gotta be back to one, but yep. it's gonna be a water. Damn. Going again, guys. <laughs> Going again. I found my light that time, Ethan Q. I found my light. The van is to be unloaded at Hoover Dam tomorrow. I don't know what Justin's laughing at. I want a Filipino close-up and I want a hot biscuit. Now, please. <laughs> Biscuits and gravy? Never heard of that? What? No, uh, good night kiss? Are you sure you want to kiss? A dirty, dirty whore. <laughs> that very first night, I always knew that we matched up just right. Silence of lions, stealthily vying to praise in sight. Endless delight. Love, 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 love at first fight. Yasin, I want you to lay down on the ground, flat, very slowly. Do what he says, and you might live long enough to see Daniel Craig play Bond. Yeah, no thanks. Craig played an Israeli assassin in Munich. Yasin, put the gun down and let the nurse go. Be hathihi al tarika in tahat kalas, ala umalatna wa mayibka, ahad lila merkan yeselo lo guantanamo. Dirka Dirka, Islamic Jihad. I didn't know we really said that. Shh. We don't say that, you idiot. Hi. Or smoking or not? I walked up to that salad bar, was all that you could eat. There was carrots, corn, alfalfa sprouts, pudding, bread. to that salad bar, the longest in the land. The other diners stared at me to see how much I ate. The waitress watched in wonder as she cleared my empty plate. I said, there's starving kids somewhere and wasting food's a sin. If you don't mind, I'll get in line. I'm going back again. What time does breakfast start? <gasps> Tiny, let the cretin, cigarette, American, 
كمان لو عندك غيره ولا على البلاستيك ايوه غيره واثنين فلاش وصندوق شوكولاته غيره وورق التواليت اخبارك صاحبك شوفوا لا ما عم يحكي لا من وقتها ما تعول لسانه لا وكمان هالشيء منا لنا هيدا الو ليت لانه بحبك بدي اعطيك شيء بلاش يا خيي هيدا خيي جابه جاب منه علبه ما بعرف شو شو كان عم بفكر هيدا لما ترشح للاسكار ما حدا بده اياه انا رح اعطيك اياه لك بلاش Good evening, Pahrump. I'm Tom Slaughter for News 41. In our top story this evening, Channel 41 has just received more breaking news concerning the alien abduction of CEO Vernon Van Winkle. Mr. Van Winkle was found wandering around the vicinity of Lady Magdalene's near Vicky Ann. He was apparently clad in only Fruit of the Loom boxers and seemed to be in a very confused state of mind. We'll have more on this story. Clear. One lousy use of the F-bomb on national TV and where do they send me? Pahrump! Bye. 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 See you later.